Welcome, and thanks for joining us. My name is Lindsay, and I'm a healthcare benefits representative in the Office of Total Rewards. You are watching our on-demand webinar about open enrollment. If any questions come up during the presentation, we ask that you email them to our office at totalrewards at rochester.edu, and we will aim to get back to you as soon as we can. Here is today's agenda. As you see, we will review the new dates announced last week, the new and noteworthy items for our 2020 benefits, and then review all benefits offered and the open enrollment election process. As of last Friday, November 1st, it was announced that our open enrollment period would be slightly delayed from what was previously announced. And this slide is just a good reminder and a visual of the new dates. Our new enrollment period is November 8th through the 22nd, and nothing else has changed about how you would enroll or where you would enroll, but that will all be covered in our presentation. First up is the university HSA funding. This is the seventh consecutive year that the university will provide HSA funding for eligible faculty, staff, residents, and fellows enrolled in the HSA eligible plan. You are eligible for this funding if you are a full-time faculty, staff, resident, or fellow earning less than $60,000 per year, that's salary band one. Eligible employees with a single plan will receive $200, and employees that are covering any dependents will receive $400. If your position qualifies you for the funds, you will also need to confirm that you meet the IRS eligibility to contribute to an HSA. All eligibility requirements will be listed in HRMS on the open enrollment pages for employees to read through. During open enrollment, by electing to contribute or on HRMS through self-service, you will be able to certify your eligibility and the HSA University funding will be deposited into your HSA account in the last pay period in January. Next are the 2020 maximum for contributing to an HSA and or an FSA. We will review eligibility for HSAs, healthcare FSAs, and limited purpose FSAs when we review your health benefits later in this video. The dependent care FSA is entirely separate from the university's health plans. So this means you can elect the dependent care FSA regardless of your health coverage. The dependent care FSA allows you to set aside up to $5,000 per household to pay for qualified daycare expenses for dependents up to age 13 who are claimed as tax dependents or a dependent adult. If you feel like you would like more specific information about HSAs or FSAs, we do have short videos that detail these on our tools and videos page of the Total Rewards website. The next new item for 2020 is your FSA rollover. The university offers the opportunity to roll over up to $500 of unused funds from your healthcare FSA or your limited purpose FSA from one plan year to the next for eligible employees. To be eligible for rollover in 2020, you must elect to contribute to your healthcare or limited purpose FSA during open enrollment. This is what's new for 2020. If you do not elect during open enrollment, then your unused funds will be forfeited, but members still have until April 30th of the new plan year to file any claims from the previous plan year. So for example, if you have a claim from December and you are not receiving rollover, as long as you submit your claim for your services in December, by April 30th, your claim will be processed. Rollover applies only to your healthcare FSA and your limited purpose FSA. Dependent care is not eligible for rollover per IRS guidelines. And our final new item for 2020 is that VSP Vision Care is expanding its benefit offering to offer benefit eligible employees the choice between two vision plans, UR Vision Basic and UR Vision Plus. Your healthcare plan no longer includes routine vision coverage, so annual eye exam and the $60 allotment for eyewear. So if you are in need of routine vision coverage in 2020, you might need to take action. If you were enrolled in VSP for 2019, 
this coverage will roll over to the UR Vision Plus plan unless you take action, such as changing to the UR Vision Basic or canceling your coverage. As we move into reviewing your 2020 benefits, the, these are just some healthcare terms that are helpful to be familiar with. <clears throat> Deductible, coinsurance, copay, and out-of-pocket maximum. Another great resource as you decision make which plan is best for you is our health plan comparison chart. It can be found on the Total Rewards website and it will use all four of these terms and the chart can be a helpful way to better understand how these terms work with your healthcare plan. Before we review the PPO plan, we are going to review the three tiers you see at the top of this slide. Both plans, PPO and HSA eligible, offer a three-tier network for providers to fall into, and you can see providers across all three tiers. That choice is up to you every time you seek a provider. Tier one is referred to as the Accountable Health Partners Network and is made up of U of R providers as well as a number of community physicians. All providers in the Accountable Health Partners Network are also in the Aetna and Excellus Network. If you see a tier one provider, you will have a higher level of coverage, which is shown on this slide by showing a lower deductible and lower copays compared to tier two. Tier two is made up of providers that are within the larger Aetna or Excellus National Network, and tier three are providers who are out of network entirely. The difference with out of network providers is the level of coverage, so higher deductible and higher out of pocket maximum. With regards to the PPO plan, there is a deductible that only applies to inpatient, outpatient, emergency room, and urgent care services. So if you have an emergency and visit the emergency room, you will pay the full cost of the visit until you reach your $500 deductible. If you already met your deductible for the year, you would pay 10% coinsurance and the plan would pay the remaining 90% of the cost of the visit. If you see a provider as an office visit, you wouldn't pay towards the deductible, rather you'd pay a copay. So if you see your primary care physician, you'd pay your copay for the visit. If you receive any additional services such as lab work, x-rays, then you'd pay towards your deductible for those additional services as they'd be considered outpatient services. So this slide is just a snapshot of the information but we'd recommend employees look at the health plan comparison chart and the tools and videos page of the Total Rewards website because we have a video that specifically reviews all the details of the PPO plan. Now, as we review the HSA eligible plan, it is helpful to know that the same tiers apply and the same categories are covered here as the PPO plan, but the plan differs in how services are billed. On the HSA eligible plan, the deductible applies to all covered medical and pharmacy expenses, so that means you'd pay the full cost or negotiated rate for all medical and pharmacy expenses until you meet your annual deductible, unlike the PPO plan, which has the same, some categories of services charged as a copay. So there's no copays on the HSA eligible plan. Once you meet your deductible, the plan will kick in and the plan will pay coinsurance, 90% for tier one services, 75% for tier two services, and 60% for tier three services. If you meet your deductible, the prescription coverage will also begin and will mirror the PPO plan. So $15 for a generic prescription, 20% coinsurance for a preferred brand drug, and 35% coinsurance for a non-preferred brand drug. And this is just another category where the PPO plan and the HSA eligible plan differ. The 2020 rate sheets that are on the Total Rewards website show the different premiums an employee would pay on either plan. Comparatively, the HSA plan has lower premiums than the PPO plan. So as employees are considering which plan is best for them, some might prefer a higher premium to have co-pays for certain services, and others may prefer a lower premium, but know that they have to pay the full cost of a service when they receive it. Additionally, our website has a specific HSA eligible plan video that goes into that plan in detail to help employees make an informed decision. 
And lastly, for both plans, preventative services are covered at 100% regardless of your deductible. If you have any questions about preventative services, please call your TPA, which is either Aetna or Excellus, to confirm that the service is considered preventative. And it's important to remember that you are employees receive an employee discount at the employee pharmacy. The employee pharmacy is located in the medical center and they offer courier services to a number of offsite locations. Employees are encouraged to contact them directly with questions about their services. Next, we will review life insurance and we have a new interactive decision tool called Benefit Scout. The tool is free to use and is similar to the Alex tool that we encourage for benefit decisions. You will be able to safely enter your information into the tool and have it help guide your life insurance election decision. You can use it by starting on your HRMS homepage, clicking Secure and Financial, then Get Started, and finally Visit Benefit Scout. As a reminder, the annual open enrollment period is also an opportunity to make changes to or elect optional life insurance coverage. Employees can apply for up to eight times their annual salary of group universal life coverage. And specifically during open enrollment, employees can increase their coverage by one times their salary without proof of good health. For more details on increasing coverage, we encourage employees to visit the open enrollment website. And now is also a great time to review and update your beneficiary designations for both the university paid coverage as well as your optional coverage. Next up for review are the voluntary benefits offered to eligible employees, and we will take a look at VSP Vision Care first. As mentioned in our new and noteworthy section, VSP Vision Care will offer two plan options to eligible employees this year, UR Vision Basic and UR Vision Plus. The two options have different premiums and different levels of coverage. So as you can see on our slide, the UR Basic includes a $35 copay for Well Vision exams, while UR Plus is a $20 copay. Additionally, the UR Basic includes $100 towards glasses or contacts per covered individual, and the UR Plus is $200. The important thing to know for your 2020 elections is that your U of R healthcare plan no longer includes routine vision. So if you are in need of routine vision benefits, your options are to choose one of these two plans. If you elected VSP coverage in 2019, your coverage will roll over to 2020 as the UR Vision Plus plan. If you would like to elect for the first time, change your plan or cancel coverage, you must take action during open enrollment. Our second voluntary benefit is the Hyatt Legal Plan. This benefit offers prepaid legal insurance that offers representation on various legal matters, including real estate and estate planning. If you are enrolled in this benefit in 2019 and do nothing during open enrollment, the plan will roll over to 2020. If you are enrolling for the first time or want to cancel your coverage, you must do so during open enrollment. This benefit does not allow you to make changes during the year with corresponding qualifying events. So open enrollment is your only time to elect or cancel your coverage. If you remember one piece of information from this webinar, it is most definitely this slide. To begin with, the open enrollment period is November 8th through the 22nd. During that time, you can enroll for the first time or make changes to your benefit elections for 2020. Prior to that, you want to know which benefits roll over. Your healthcare plan and dental plan roll over, which includes your TPA, so Aetna or Excellus, and your coverage level. VSP Vision Care rolls over to the new UR Vision Plus. Hyatt Legal rolls over, and so does life insurance. So if you want to change or cancel any of the benefits above, you must take action. Next, if you do nothing during open enrollment, your FSA and HSA will discontinue for 2020. This means both of these require action if you would like either in 2020, as FSA and HSA do not roll over. And this applies to all three FSA options, healthcare, limited purpose, and dependent care. And remember, the new FSA rollover eligibility means that if you have a healthcare 
or limited purpose FSA now and want $500 or less to roll over, you must elect to contribute to either in 2020 during open enrollment. So our next three slides will give you a quick review of the decisions you need to make in regards to health and dental coverage. First, if you are planning to elect health coverage, you will need to make three decisions. You need to choose a health plan, either the Your PPO plan or the Your HSA eligible plan. Then choose a third party administrator, either Aetna or Excellus. And both Aetna and Excellus administer the plans in the same way. Most differences include the provider network, the drug formulary, and any specific member benefits they each like to offer. And finally, you need to decide who you want covered on your health plan. There are four different coverage levels available for you to pick from. Single, employee plus child or children, employee plus spouse or domestic partner, and family coverage. And for information on eligible dependents and more details about each plan, you can use the health program guide found on the open enrollment and total rewards websites. Next, based on your plan selection, you can elect an HSA or an FSA. Health savings account, HSA, is available to employees who enrolled in the HSA eligible plan. Flexible spending account, FSA, is if you enrolled in the PPO plan or the HSA, HSA eligible plan and do not enroll in an HSA, then you can contribute to an FSA. If you waived health coverage altogether, you can contribute to an FSA. And if you enrolled in the HSA eligible plan and have elected to contribute to an HSA, then you can elect a limited purpose FSA. And then dependent care FSA. So regardless of your health plan election, if you have a qualified dependent under age 13 or a tax dependent adult, you may enroll in this and use the funds towards care needs for the dependent. And you can refer to IRS publication 503 for a list of eligible expenses. And as a reminder, our website has short videos that detail HSAs, their eligibility and how they're used, as well as eligibility and how to use all three FSAs that we offer. If you are enrolling in new dental coverage or changing your dental coverage, you will need to choose a plan. So you choose between traditional plan or medallion and you will need to choose which dependents to be covered on your plan. Please note your options are single or family. And if you're electing family during open enrollment, be sure to add all your dependents through HRMS to be able to add them to the plan. And Excellus administers both plans, so you will not need to choose an insurance carrier for this benefit. So once you are ready to make your elections, go to HRMS, as this is where you will start to make all of your benefit decisions. On your HRMS homepage, you will see buttons to use for health or dent and, and dental benefits. You'll see security and financial for life insurance, and you'll see a section for your benefits extra, which is for VSP Vision and Hyatt Legal. Remember, you will need to use the Duo tool if you are attempting to log into HRMS offsite, and you can visit the IT website or call IT directly for assistance in setting this up. If you have questions about the enrollment process or would like additional assistance, please call Ask URHR and they can answer your questions and walk you through the open enrollment screens in HRMS. So there are three steps to the open enrollment process. Step one, review your benefits. Take a look at your current coverage and use your insurance carrier's website, either Aetna or Excellus, to review your claims and costs over the past year to make sure you are in a plan that makes sense for your coverage needs. You wanna review your dependents and make sure they will be eligible for coverage in 2020. Review your life insurance and your beneficiaries. Review your VSP vision and Hyatt legal plan coverage. And we always encourage everyone to review the open enrollment materials on the Total Rewards website. And use the Alex tool. Alex is an interactive benefits decision-making tool. It will ask you questions about who will be on your plan, what types of services you think you might use, and it will provide a cost comparison for each of the plans. Alex will Alex will also walk you through a few scenarios to show you how the plans work in different situations. Step two, choose your plans. 
Log into HRMS to make your elections. The HRMS homepage will have buttons to click to make your health, dental, FSA, or HSA elections, a link for Security and Life for life insurance elections, and a separate link for your benefit extras to elect VSB and or Hyatt legal coverage. Very important to remember, if you want an FSA or an HSA in 2020, remember to make a new election during open enrollment. Your contribution will not roll over and you are only eligible for unused FSA funds to roll over if you elect to contribute during open enrollment. And step three, watch for your confirmation items and detailed confirmation statement in December. Confirmation items include, HRMS will send an email confirming they've received your submitted elections. For Securian, if you choose to receive information electronically, you will get an immediate email. You will also receive a new or updated certificate of coverage in the mail in January if you, if you have increased or decreased your coverage. For VSP and Hyatt Legal, you will receive an immediate confirmation email and you will also receive a welcome letter in the mail in January. Employees will also receive a confirmation statement from the Office of Total Rewards that details all benefit elections and this will come in the mail in December. Employees are strongly encouraged to keep all confirmation items in a safe and secure place in case they are ever needed during the plan year. If you have any questions about open enrollment, contact Ask URHR. You can also stop by an open enrollment Q&A session or a help so session and the schedule is on the Open Enrollment website. The Total Rewards website also has the videos that we mentioned and the Alex tool as resources to help employees make their benefit decisions. Thanks for joining us today. And any questions that have come up as you watch this can be emailed into totalrewards at rochester.edu.